How you doing? It's Jeff Noyes here from OceansideAirbrush.com again and today we're going to do a tutorial on how to make your trigger button a little more comfortable. Uh, a lot of people like them higher. I do. Uh, just trying to get the angle right on the camera here. The trigger button could be a little bit higher so that your finger sits a little higher to get more leverage. Um, I like these Badger uh, Renegade series. This is the Velocity. It's my favorite, one of my favorite airbrushes. It's got a .2 tip, so great for detail. What I really love about it, though, is how far back the trigger is. If you look, the bowl has a whole finger width uh, between the bowl and my finger, uh, and that's when it's off. And when you pull the trigger back, it's even further. So it's got a nice far back trigger. Some triggers are touching the bowl already. Um, but one thing I do like, uh, or I don't like, I should say, is on most airbrushes, the trigger isn't quite angled enough. If you look at my custom uh, Ren or, uh, Raptor, you'll see that I've, I've had this design specifically for m my finger, pretty much. It has grip on it, and it's tilted forward. So the grip is tilted downward, and it's very grippy and it's got a concave too. It curves sideways so it fits your finger perfect. But anyway, um, this one's got a perfect trigger because I had it designed uh, just for me. Um, I do have the Raptors available on my website right now if you want to go to OceansideAirbrush.com you can get one. For an inexpensive airbrush it will compare to uh, Iwata's or Badger's and I think you'll be very happy with it. Um, but today we're going to fix up the badger velocity and we're going to make the trigger a little taller and a little bit tilted and a little bit more concave this way like my other trigger so it fits my finger better now um, I saw a couple guys on YouTube do this already but I wanted to uh, do my own tutorial on it because I've got a little bit of a, a tweak that makes it a little nicer looking and a little better Okay, so the first thing we want to do is uh, get out your glue gun and heat it up. Okay, so get your heat, heat going on the glue gun and uh, get it going. Take the back off your uh, airbrush, the handle off, uh, undo the chuck, take the needle out, put the needle aside. Um, I gotta clean this needle, it looks like some paint stuck to it. Uh, tighten the chuck back up so you don't lose the chuck nut. I've done that where it's just been sitting loose and then the next time I looked at my hairbrush it was missing and then I gotta go look for it on the floor somewhere. So don't lose that. Tighten it up just so it doesn't fall out. Now that the needle's out you can lift the trigger out. Okay, so now we don't need the airbrush. We're done with that. We're done with the handle. We don't need that. All we need is this trigger. Now keep in mind that the slot in the trigger faces forward. Okay, now it doesn't matter uh, which way the slot faces forward, it's identical on both sides. So it doesn't really matter which side is facing forward. But as long as the slot is facing the same way as your airbrush would. Okay, so when your finger is on it, like that, the slot should be facing uh, the same way your finger is. Okay, so the slot, the hole in the in the shaft there should be the same way as you don't want it going across this way okay you want it going the same way as your finger okay so when you have your finger there that's the way it's going to face on the on the airbrush okay so what we want to do is we want to build it up a little higher just try to make sure I stay in the center of the camera here uh, we want to build it up a little higher and we want to tilt it just a little bit. Now I've seen guys use the glue gun straight on there and, and put some glue on there and then just kind of shape it a little bit with the glue gun or something. Um, but I've got this little uh, thing I do that seems to work really well. And you can go ahead and steal my idea if you like. Um, take a piece of masking tape, it doesn't matter really what kind, I, I'm just using uh, one inch masking tape here, or inch and a half um, masking tape. So just uh, take your um, your trigger and just place it against the tape, okay? And uh, you know, I don't need this much tape, I got way too much here, I'll just take some of that off. Uh, you can rip it in half to keep it nice and short. Okay, let's try that again, do it with a little bit shorter tape. So you're just gonna hook it on there, 
and kind of turn it and go around. It's really hard to get the first piece to stick on, but once you get it around all the way, you're good. And then once you got it on there, you're, you're pretty good. Alright, so cool. So what you end up having is uh, a little thing like this, and you can take something and just shape the inside to make sure it's round. Okay, so now uh, what you have here is a trigger with a wall of tape around it, and so now you got a mold. Okay, so now you can pour the hot glue in the top here. Okay, and then just pour the hot glue in there, and it'll make this perfect round shape around the trigger. Okay, and then when it's a little bit, when it's set a little bit, I'm just going to pump some glue in here. Okay. It's, just pumping it in there. Spread it around, make sure it gets into the corners. Alright, and then just dab on it a bit with the top of the glue gun. Press it down in there. And then maybe add just a bit more glue. I don't like my triggers too high. Some people like them really high, I don't like them that high. So just let the glue, you know, kind of settle down just a little bit. And you'll feel some heat in your fingers down on the end of the trigger, that's fine. You can use the back of a pencil or something and just uh, squish it over a little bit. And then what you're going to do is uh, wherever the slot is, you're going to kind of just reach your finger in there. Uh, you can use your pinky finger and just press on it just a little bit on the top there. Okay, and then uh, once you got this sort of dry, you don't want it all the way dry, um, you, you take the tape off you can blow in there and then once you once you got that you can just peel the tape off and voila got a nice glued trigger now you can shape it up just a little bit with your fingers like this to round it okay and then what you want to do is take your glue gun while it's still hot and just heat up the top just a little bit like this okay you don't need to add any more glue just kind of use the tip to reheat it and I like to just roll it all kind of into the middle and then just set my finger on it not right away because it's pretty hot stuff it'll hurt it'll burn you so um, I just got this one piece sticking up here I don't like so I'm just kind of remolding this corner there we go and then once you got the the glue nice and even it, it's nice it's not dripping over the sides now because the tape held it on so it's perfectly in the right place then just take your finger and just gently push it down in the shape you want on the angle you want so I like mine a little tilted so I'm pushing harder on the front than the back so that it, uh, it gives me that extra little bit of tilt on the grip and uh, this isn't the best one I've done I've done them a little neater than this before you can always use the glue gun edge just to neaten it up a little bit if you screwed up a corner. Like I just got this one corner that's just hanging off a little bit. Kind of just bugging me. You know, you don't have to be perfect. This comes off easy too if you want to pull it off and just uh, redo it. You can do that or if you just don't like it in general you can just take it off and be done with it. I got one little tiny low spot. I'm just going to add a little tiny blob of glue and there you go that's pretty much perfect and uh, I'm just gonna let it set just a little bit here and then I'm just gonna touch it again oh, see if you go too soon it sticks to your finger too you wanna wait till it's kinda rubbery and then press on it there we go perfect alright cool so there you go now you got a nice round or mostly round you'll see I got this one side here it's a little lumpy I could clean it up a bit but this side's higher than this side this side's slanted low okay so now when I put my finger on it across the slot um, it fits perfect actually it doesn't there's one little bump right in the middle where I don't like it so just use the glue gun and push the bump out of the way if, if you don't like where there's a little ridge or something. You, you want it kind of concaved with your finger so you can use the glue gun to reshape it if you need to a little bit. 
and I like to do it just when it's sticky enough to leave a fingerprint in it and then it's like then it then you got your fingerprints gelled into the glue so you can say hey that's my airbrush it's got my fingerprint on it right there as ID so it's another way you can ID your airbrush just kidding that probably wouldn't work too well but it does work as a grip really nicely okay so now it fits my finger perfect I don't like this one little spot I'm just gonna fix here just a little ridge it's not that it's too high it's that there's actually a little hole so I'll just fill it up with glue so there's no little hole there and uh, once again I touched it too soon you know if you just kind of hold your finger there though it's, it's going to end up sticking to the glue more than your finger it doesn't really hurt when it's hot you know it, it hurts if it's extremely hot but most of the time it's just warm so you know don't be afraid to touch the glue while it's still still pretty warm it's not going to hurt you but that being said don't go burning yourself on the glue gun tip it's extremely hot and the glue when it first comes out is really hot so don't you know don't go burning yourself okay so now we're done building the trigger uh, top so we'll just go ahead and drop the trigger back in into the airbrush make sure it's pressing the valve just right and look at that perfect okay and then you can go ahead and put the needle back in just get a little dry spot of paint there I didn't clean it as good as I should have last time I loosen the chuck again so that the needle goes through properly slide the needle all the way through kind of give it a little seat give it a couple of taps to make sure it's all the way down lock the chuck replace the handle and uh, voila you got yourself a super custom airbrush trigger tip uh, trigger cap I guess we'll call it now I've actually made some custom caps I don't have them here though I forgot to bring them here I made a couple and then had a manufacturer design uh, you know a, a factory version of it and I hope to have them for sale on on our website soon what they do is they they're rubber and they snap on over your trigger and they work just like that and they're a little bit slanted and they have the rubber little knurled grip on the top and I'm gonna make them in three different heights so there's gonna be thin medium and tall um, and then uh, I'm gonna make them for all the different airbrushes first one I'm, I'm gonna do all the badger ones because I use a lot of badger airbrushes so I'm gonna make um, them available first and then you'll see the ones for the Iwata ones and stuff a lot of the triggers are the same size though and you can kind of use them on different airbrushes but I'm going to make them exact fit so that they're perfect for each airbrush and then they'll be available on our website OceansideAirbrush.com but if you look at that I mean the glue works pretty good I like to use the tape and just build a little uh, wall around it make you know I rushed it though and and I should have let the tape or I should have let the glue dry longer before I took the tape off I really and that's why the edges got roughed up a bit and I had to fix it but other than that it, it's pretty perfect I mean it, it's not perfectly round but it fits my finger really nice and it gives it good grip what's nice about the hot glue or or the new uh, rubber um, trigger caps that I'm making is that they don't move there's no flexibility to them they don't wobble it, you see a lot of guys use foam like you cut out a piece of the foam from your airbrush kit uh, that it came in and but they move so what happens is you get this little bit of a wobble on top of the trigger where there's a bit of play and I hate that because I'm trying to do detail I want the trigger to be very sensitive I don't want it to uh, I don't want it to wobble at all it has to move when I touch it so if I'm doing this and it's just moving the foam on top I wouldn't be very happy so I don't like I've not, I've tried the foam once and hated it so if you hate the foam try the glue it works way way better it's way firmer and the grip feels nicer too it feels kind of rubbery um, you're gonna really love our trigger caps that will be available 
Um, I'm hoping to have them available in the next two weeks uh, on OceansideAirbrush.com. So thanks for watching everybody. That's how you uh, make a new uh, trigger or a taller, better grip trigger for your airbrushes.